Do you want to take your live streams from looking like this to something more like this? Well, today, with the help of Serato's free visual packs, I'm going to show you how to do it. So Serato have recently released a full range of live visuals that we can implement into our live sets to level them up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head to Serato's website and download some of these free assets. There will be a link in the description below where you can find this page. So in there, we've got visual loops, we've got DJ box and overlays, we've got entire OBS scenes, and we've also got gift packs to help level up our scene. So as you can see, we're framing our camera to show the front of our DJ booth here. However, it looks a bit of a mess. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna download one of the DJ booth overlays from Serato's website and implement that to make our scene look much more interesting. So now you can see we're in OBS and we've got this scene set up. It's looking rather boring. We've got Jamie stood on the DJ booth, but we can see all underneath, see all the messy cables, and it's rather uninteresting. So I've gone ahead and downloaded the DJ booth pack from Serato's website. And in here, there's loads of different PNG DJ booth overlays that we can use to create a nicer effect. So I'm going to go down here. I'm just going to grab this one, and you can simply drag and drop it. Now we have this overlay as one of our sources down here. So now it's about resizing this overlay to fit our scene. So I've just made it bigger. Make sure you don't do that. So I've made it bigger and then simply drag it to fit the DJ booth. And there we have it. Just like that, we've already made this scene look so much better by using one of the downloadable DJ booths. But we can take it even a step further. I've also downloaded the overlay pack from Serato's website, and from here I can choose a complete overlay. So if I grab this retro TV, again, drag it onto the scene, you can see that it's now placed our scene under a old TV. However, it doesn't quite fit the TV correctly. So with a simple bit of resizing, and there we have it. The scene is already looking 10 times better and all we've done is download two single images from Serato's website and implemented them into our scene. So as you can see behind me, we're setting up a green screen so we can take full advantage of the next set of visuals that Serato offer. The visual loops and also the OBS scenes both need a green screen to be used properly. Don't worry, green screens are readily available on places like Amazon and eBay, and they are quite cheap as well. The top tip here is to make sure that you light the back of the green screen well enough to remove any possible shadows. So here we are back in OBS and our green screen is set up. So with the green screen, we can use either the visual loops to create a different background, or more impressively, we can use the OBS scenes that are available to download from the Serato website. I've downloaded the Enchanted Forest pack, which is here, and inside that download is six files that are numbered one to six. A quick way of importing these is simply to drag them into the sources on your scene, and this will automatically load them into OBS. Once the files have been loaded into the sources, we now need to make sure they are listed in the correct numerical value. So number one needs dragging up to the top and then make sure the rest of the scenes follow suit. Now that we have the sources correctly ordered, you'll notice that some of the source names have actions written after them. For example, number one is called Caterpillar, but then it says filter scroll 80. So highlight this, click filters, then apply a scroll, click OK, and set the horizontal speed to 80. Make sure you do this for every single source that lists an action after its name. Note that even the background video has an action after it that says loop. To activate the loop, double click the file, highlight the loop, make sure it's ticked, then press OK. Now that all the sources are in order and all the actions have been taken out on them, make sure you drag your green screen webcam or video capture device on top of the background video. So as we can see, our DJ and the green screen is covering up the background video and it looks a bit messy and a bit lost. So what we need to do is make use of the green screen 
by clicking filters and applying a color key. Now we've applied a color key, we need to make sure that the key color type is the same as our background. So we have a green screen, click green. And then we need to drag this similarity fader up until the green in the background disappears. Go too far and you run the risk of losing detail out of your DJ and the equipment. You can use the smoothness fader underneath to help blend between the two images and also the contrast and the brightness below to help boost the image of the DJ and the equipment on top. Make sure your DJ is looking very strong, full of color and has minimal green showing around their edges. Now this has been applied, you'll notice that we can still see areas behind the green screen and below the uh, equipment where the white table is. So what we're going to do is apply a crop filter. And now we just need to crop in using numerical values to remove as much of this information that we don't want as possible. Once we're left with just the DJ and the equipment, we can close this down. Now we have our DJ standing in front of the background video. We just need to resize all of the different aspects and we may need to reorder it. For example, I'm gonna put the DJ ahead of the fog so he doesn't get lost behind it. You may need to resize some of the elements of the scene to make the best out of the camera angles and equipment you have available. Also available on Serato website are video loops and gift packs. Video loops could be used with the green screen method that we've just shown, replacing the scene's background with one of these video loops. However, what I like to do with these is to create an intro scene. So start by creating a new scene and then download a video loop from the Serato website. Drag a video loop that you like into the scene and resize it to suit. Make sure that you double click on the source and make sure that you enable the loop function. Then go ahead and add a new source, hit text, click OK, and then type in stream starting soon. You can modify this further by changing your font and the size. To center the text, right click on the text whilst it's highlighted, head to transform and center to screen. To level this up further, I'm just going to add some GIFs that are also available from Serato's website. So here we are in the Enchanted Forest. We've set up our scene. It's looking amazing, but we can take this one step further. We can even have what we're playing on Serato show up in Twitch, just down here, so none of your audience will be left wondering or questioning you all the time on what this track is. So how do we set it up? On the Serato website is a really helpful guide for this particular topic. You can find a link to it in our news article or we'll also link it in the description below. And this will help you get set up with the Now Playing extension for Twitch. So the first thing we want to do is head to this article and if we scroll down, you'll find that there's a link here on number one and this will take us to our extensions on Twitch. Now we will need to be logged into the account on Twitch that we stream with. Once you are logged in and you've found this extension, click Serato Now Playing and Install. It will pop up saying that it is installed successfully. It'll give you the option to continue browsing or to configure. We're gonna to head to configure. Now what we need to do is take this unique code that's shown to us in the top left-hand corner of the settings and we need to copy that to our clipboard. So you can just hit the copy button there. And now we need to head into Serato DJ Pro. Once you're in Serato DJ Pro, make sure you click on your settings, head to expansion packs, and then click on Serato playlists. We need to enable the live playlist option. We can now close this. And before we go live, we now need to head into the history tab, which is just next to the search tab in your library. Now in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see the start live playlist. Click this option. It will ask us if we accept the terms and conditions. I'm just gonna make sure it doesn't ask us again and I'm gonna press yes. This will now open up a web browser that will take us to the Serato DJ website. Here we can copy that code in 
that we had on our clipboard from the Twitch site, and we can press link account. The Serato Now playing Twitch extension has now been enabled. Now this is done, we can head back to Twitch. You'll notice that the account is now linked. We can now go ahead and change some of the settings of the overlay. So we can go ahead and change what size it is, where it's placed on our screen, how fast the text will scroll from left to right, and we can even change the background color to make sure it doesn't get lost in your stream. So I'm gonna set up a color here, an outline and a background color. Finally, you can add some emotes either side of the scrolling bar and then press save changes. Once these changes have been saved, you can exit out of here and now click down on the activate button and click set as overlay. The extension has now successfully been applied to your stream. Now everything is set up in Serato and on Twitch, we're ready to get playing and our track will show up on the stream. Now many of you might have noticed that this hasn't been implemented into OBS, this is simply between Serato and Twitch. So this is really cool because it allows us to use our DJ laptop down here and this is connected to the internet, but all it's doing is sending the track information that we're playing at the moment. By doing this, we're able to use a second laptop to run OBS and do all the green screen and whatnot. So those of you that know, will know that green screening and doing all these scenes and all this mad stuff can add a lot of performance and graphical load onto your machine. So it's a good idea to use a separate computer to host your stream, run OBS, do all the green screen, but then use a separate laptop to actually do your DJing on. And this Twitch extension allows you to DJ on any laptop and use a second machine to run your green screen.